<laughs> All the fun is right here. Hello, I'm Axel Ridby, game director here at Rocksteady Studios. I'm Darius Sadegian, studio director at Rocksteady Studios. We're so excited to welcome you all to episode two of our ongoing series, hey! Suicide Squad Insider. In our last episode, we gave you a look at our combat system that combines story, powerful traversal abilities, iconic melee attacks, and explosive gunplay to offer something truly unique. Hello, beautiful! We wanted to challenge ourselves. We wanted to expand and really push ourselves in terms of making something new and fresh. Light him up! When first introduced, the free foe combat of Batman Arkham Asylum broke new ground and set a standard that is still popular today. In that spirit, the Rocksteady team decided to delve into new mechanics. If you're playing solo, you have the power to make combat in our game unique to you while making your way through our story campaign. If you decide to play co-op with friends, you can each become an expert with your playstyle and customize builds, creating a powerful squad unlike any other. Each person can offer a different benefit to the play experience. We're super excited to see those sort of team play synergistic effects happen. You want a high five? Up high. In the Suicide Squad, the world, the narrative, all our features evolve through the lens of DC lore. Fans for the DC Universe are going to be really excited for this. Not only are we bringing characters back that we've used in the Arkham series, but we're introducing new ones. You can call me Colonel Rick Flagg. We want players to feel like they explored the DC Universe with us. Not just through the story, but also through the mechanics. Ah, no lasso? You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> In this episode, we'll meet some of the iconic DC characters who will be helping our anti-heroes to take on their impossible mission. Awesome! Through conversations with our team, our voice cast, and our playtesters, along with extended gameplay, we'll give you a preview of some of the amazing new possibilities we're excited about with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Wait, which superheroes did you say you were again? This is Suicide Squad Insider, Episode 2. The RPG systems are the connective tissue inside of the game. Things like weapon customization, talent customization, things that really let players get into how they want their character to play. Now, let's begin. We built this game with near limitless strategic and personal options. Players craft their own character within a character. Everyone can pick not only their favorite, but really make a character that's their own. There's really high skill ceiling mechanics in this game where as you learn to traverse, as you learn to combine your character's abilities more and more, you become better, your character becomes stronger, and in the story of the game, you're taking on stronger and stronger threats. We have this perspective of always tying back to the narrative and always giving context around the mechanics. With the DC world out there, it just gave us unlimited potential. With the Arkham games, you could modify some elements of, of Batman himself. But we knew early on, going with an action shooter was an opportunity to go down a new path and try out new mechanics with a new type of game. Someone's been busy. How'd you have time to make all this? In our last episode, we showed the Suicide Squad recruiting the Penguin for Argus. Okay, Waller. We bag Penguin. He goes back to the Hall of Justice to start helping the squad out. I'm taking authority. Since we last showed you the Justice League's HQ, it's had a makeover from Amanda Waller and her team. And it's now the forward operating base for Argus's fight against Brain. So when considering gameplay, we knew we needed an arms dealer. You need a good gun runner. For us, it's been great to bring Penguin back from the Arkham days. We love working with this character. What he gives you is lots of options for upgrading individual weapons, crafting, it feels like you're actually interacting with Penguin when you're crafting these items. And that's really where Penguin as a character comes to life in the game. You get to build them up, creating some really unique combinations, and you can play the game in a way that's unique to you. We have weapons based on different manufacturers. Star Labs, we have Amortech, we have LexCorp, we have DCPD. And they all come with different flavors. 
Lex is a very scientific man, right? The guns are very scientific in nature. They have very specific recoil patterns and spread patterns, almost like they are calculated. Then we have Amatec, which is more improvised weaponry, really fast fire rates, high ammo capacity, but it kicks like a donkey. And once you've unlocked those manufacturers, you can go to Penguin and ask him to sort of craft specific weapons in those manufacturers. Different guns will play with different styles. Maybe you've got a dead shot focused on critical hits, on headshots. That might mean that you want to favor a legendary gun which works with that playstyle. Nice, nice, nice! Penguin is only one member of what we call the support squad. Toot toot, scumbags! They're various supervillains that the squad have begged, stolen, or borrowed from. For players who just want to play through the story, they'll get the full arsenal to be able to take on the Justice League. But for players who really want to sort of maximize their characters, the support squad missions and lot really cool features. Our designers have put a lot of effort into making sure that when you play the game, you can have a very different experience from someone else. Let's meet the rest of the support squad. Here we can see the scientist Gizmo, who has set up shop in the basement of the Hall of Justice. Yeah, perfect. We know. His primary contribution to the squad is the sort of airdropped vehicles that you can use for combat. You're getting into this flying vehicle with rockets and a turret. You sort of blow shit up. And the havoc you can create is outstanding. Each character from the DC universe offers the player a different way of interacting with the game. I've been trying on the name Toy Man. <laughs> More like Annoy Man. Am I right? <laughs> Toy Man is one character that helps you actually figure out ways of defeating the Justice League. He's a tech boy genius who wants nothing more than to help save Metropolis. He can't quite come to terms with the fact that his heroes are now the villains. Changing stuff is my middle name. You can unlock more and more things you can do with Toy Man to enhance your gear. If you want to really perfect your gear to really suit how you like to play the game, Toy Man's the character to talk to. I'm Hack. Hack is this sort of electronic astral projection. Anything that has electricity, Hack can manifest through. By working with Hack and increasing your talent points over the course of the game, you can unlock a whole myriad of different abilities. For example, with Harley, you can increase her grenade damage. Thank you! Well, alongside the talent tree, we have what we call the combat combo system. As you're doing these more intricate moves, you build up your combo faster, and the higher that combo is, the more talents you activate. Ah, oh, this so slow! Hack also uses her abilities to literally hack Brainiac's comms, so you get to listen in on what the Justice League is talking about, and you also get to hear their sort of corrupted personalities and how different they are from the heroes you once knew. We have complete control, Brainiac. Now let's talk about one more member of our support squad. Another infamous DC villain that Director Waller once recruited. At this point in the game, the squad has discovered evidence that Poison Ivy may be alive. Ivy? Poison Ivy? Dead Poison Ivy after Scarecrow gave Gotham a crop dusting. For fans who paid close attention to Arkham Knight, they will remember that when Poison Ivy died, she left behind a little sprout. I got a real strong hunch she ain't pushing up daisies no more. And in this game, you discovered that that sproutling has been uh, cared for by some people who may have had their own motivations for doing so, but in the chaos of Metropolis, she's escaped. Find her. Bring her to me for questioning. Using special technology they've acquired, the Suicide Squad is tracking Ivy down. If Ivy's in the city, this tracker will lead you to her. Unless y'all want to end up a poorly plated spring mix, you better put me in charge and let me talk to Ives first. So when playing solo, players can switch between any of the characters. And you'll get to experience all the different play styles across all of the different missions. And here we go! So here she is. Thought she'd be taller. Are you serious right now? Poison Ivy is a redhead. This is a plant. You might be the dumbest. Them 
is not made of meat. Is this what you call a vegetarian option? I don't know you, but my pheromones remember you. Oh, strange emotions. Tell me about it. Wasn't expecting you to come in fun size. You really don't know me? Harley and Ivy forever? Intense story burning letters? Nope. Jeez, Lex LexCorp really did a number on you, huh, Red? He dressed you up in that outfit, too? No. I took it. When I broke out. He shut me in a room in his tower. If I worked on the things he wanted, I got a whole hour of sunlight every day. What did he want? Weapons. Making them more effective against the alien invaders. You know, they're very susceptible to plant toxins. And, um, I know all about plant toxins. <laughs> we know. That's why they call you Poison Ivy. <laughs> it's just Ivy, weirdo. Where's Lex now? I don't know. Something spooked him, I guess. He got in his big robot suit and stomped off. Ooh, I know that look. Who are you murdering? The corrupted things that are coming. All of them. They're poisoning the Earth with their gross bodies. So I lured them here. <laughs> the wrath of nature. I like it. Oh, this is my friend Daphne. We'll make all the aliens choke to death on spores. You make sure Daphne doesn't die, or you're next. Waller, be advised Lex is AWOL in a power suit, and Ivy's an eco-terrorist middle schooler. Dead shot out. How'd we end up hugging a giant plant? Oh, I have allergies. <laughs> Anyone care? Ah! Here's a brief look at the mission that follows your first encounter with Ivy. You'll see a variety of custom builds and loadouts that draw on the power of DC villains. Ivy's plants need protection. Split up your squad to attack from different directions. Our asses won't get kicked just standing here. Now go defend! Combat in this game revolves around three core pillars. Traversal, gunplay and melee. Someone like Deadshot can take a vantage point and provide cover fire. You can find wild ways to upgrade your melee attacks. With the Great Suspender, a single boomerang can launch several enemies off the ground. A job worth doing right! Harley's gun is from the Bane's Rage set. Landing a critical hit spawns a power-up that can infuse other weapons like grenades with Bane's Rage, making them more powerful. Get the invaders off Daphne! Quickly! Those aliens pollute everything! King Shark's loadout here includes Black Mask's Bulletstorm and the Heat Wave's Molten Shield to synergize. He has triggered the Bulletstorm effect, which means that he's now immune from damage thanks to the Heat Wave's Molten Shield making this a perfect opportunity to get in close. Savor it. This mission is where we introduce afflictions, elemental attacks from Ivy's plants that draw on the powers of different DC villains. Use an affliction to freeze your enemies before you deliver an explosive finale. Task Force X, report. <laughs> Have you secured Ivy? Yeah, kind of a funny story. Although she doesn't remember her old life, Ivy is still a deadly expert with toxins, and she can offer your build some interesting new feature, afflictions. The results are so neat. When you manage to recruit her, she comes back to the Hall of Justice as kind of like a loose cannon, precocious toddler who also has terrifying genetic engineering powers. Then we introduce the concept of afflictions. Players can apply these afflictions to their melee weapons, their grenades, so they can mix and match different things for the encounter. And each affliction ties back to a DC character. 
So we have four afflictions. Diablo Blaze sets people on fire, burns them over time. But you can't shield harvest them. We have Deep Freeze, freezes people. You can shatter them with your guns, but they are pretty resistant to melee damage. They won't drop ammo when they die. At any point, you could have up to two different elemental afflictions, then add in the three other players. So what you've got there is lots of different ways to engage with enemies. Your fight is far from over. So at Rocksteady, what we sort of pride ourselves on is investigating how players play. Do they get the language that we're trying to create? We had an amazing opportunity to get a group of proper gamers from the community involved in the development process pretty early. Some of the characters, the mission types join the story. I'd definitely say this has got a rock steady stamp on it. The experience of Suicide Squad because of Justice League is really fluid, really smooth, and it feels really polished. It's chaos, but in a good way. <laughs> it's very fast and very momentum based. And I think there's a lot of verticality to it. No other game that makes you feel so free and powerful. Yes! You also have this deep building of your character with a more superhero twist. For example, I kind of gravitated towards Dead Shark because I'm a big fan of shooting guns and big crit builds. You can use the juggling mechanic to get 100% crit chance and then from there do big damage. The knowledge that we gained, seeing players explore the mechanics, gave us like a little taste of what it's going to be like when we got like a bigger community to share the game with. Now listen. How about a team up? In the studio based the Arkham series, we were very much focused on single character, a single perspective. And with this game, we saw that opportunity to get the community more involved. For us, it was about expanding and enhancing into something new and different. And we wanted this experience to be shared with more than just one person. One of the coolest experiences in the game is when you're playing with friends and each character can tackle the problems that you're facing together differently. You are learning how to overcome challenges together. All these characters are geared up to be able to complement each other. Because each of them is moving differently, sometimes another character might come in from a direction you don't expect. You can create unintentional cinematic moments with your friends. When you really are in sync with your squad, it's such a special feeling, and I think something I haven't experienced in any other game. Multiplayer is new for the studio, but it's super exciting because we get to see the Rocksteady hallmarks of a story-driven game, but from multiple perspectives, and getting to share that with your friends is pretty unique. We hope you enjoyed episode two of Suicide Squad Insider. Phew, I need a smoke. Mm, I need more therapy. In our next episode, we'll take a look at what you can expect from our game after launch. This is the biggest cinematic experience that Rocksteady has ever created with more hours of cinematic cutscenes than ever before. <laughs> but I think we leave the setting of our story open enough that for post-launch content, players will be excited to come back and find out what we're gonna do next. You, uh, wanna talk about it? You know what, Quinn? I do. I don't think players are ready for the new playable characters they're going to get, or even the places they're going to get to take them. This game is much bigger than the world of the Suicide Squad. Rocksteady will continue to build on the story. We're delivering you a full game, but for those that want to go further, we're going to have lots of new updates that are free to our players, and we really want to engage with our community to give them new experiences regularly. At the end of the game, everyone goes, wow, this was a hell of a ride. <laughs> Let's play again.